Thank you very much indeed for the invitation to this uh, two-day event. Thank you for being here on a Saturday morning. I'll try not to speak too fast for our friends, the interpreters. I'm usually uh, speak very fast uh, uh, and, and do my best, but uh, I can't promise anything. So thank you for to Jean-Louis Delat to uh, having associated me to this event for two reasons. First, uh, when I started my thesis oh, a long time ago, it was on the closing of mines and uh, European construction. And I wanted to conclude my last chapter with the process of heritage um, in Europe, but um, it was uh, too much work and uh, my uh, schedule was too tight so I did not have time and I also wanted to do a, a monography on the history of mining heritage in Europe in Poland, in Spain, uh, Sardinia and uh, the UK. So maybe in two to three years, uh, I would launch a European project. So this is in uh, this vein that I uh, was very happy to participate to this two-day event. Everything started with a draft article I was uh, um, asked to do on the work on uh, comic books and an article on the representation of mines in the French Belgium comic book sector. I will not have time to go through the uh, all the elements of this research. I will just broach a few of them and we can discuss it over lunch of course if you are interested. So it's not really associated with a, a museography approach. Well well, we will still um, talk about a few uh, recent projects on the topic to use comic books as a um, factor amongst some publics. And I will also use uh, representation of mining in the comic books and why comic books is a very good means to talk about mining representation. So uh, I'm not going to have time to talk about everything. It's not also the, the goal, but uh, let me just tell you about as many uh, aspects as possible to tell you about the originality of uh, comic books as a media compared to the um, work class uh, universe of uh, mining sector and if I see that I don't have uh, enough time I will uh, reach my conclusions uh, quickly I hope I will have enough time to tell you about uh, the originality and richness of comic books as a vector in my research work and I'm not going to go into details here of course but uh, on the mining uh, sectors uh, there are uh, things uh, that um, uh, appear in all uh, comic books. The fact of using this history as a social microcosm, that is a human history, the history of coal, of course, but not only, also the story of all stakeholders in a industrial society, not only mining uh, society. Second, uh, commonality in all artistic representation of mind, with maybe a difference in painting. Uh, I, I go a bit too fast, sorry for the interpreters, not to worry. The interpreters uh, can go fast. Uh, it's the quest for authenticity of realism. Maybe I will go back to this in my conclusions. But in, in terms of uh, the mining sector, we want to preserve strong uh, historical uh, truth, not to uh, um, forget uh, the drama miners went through. So many comic books authors I interviewed for this research told me that their fear was to make part of this dramatic history invisible, to erase it. So he, he wanted to make sure not to um, forget it. And then the third element, many uh, comic books were on the uh, post history of uh, coal mining with a specific um, specificity of comic books, it's the only media or art which took an interest of uh, the mining sector after a uh, coal mining period, notably in Belgium. It's the only media which uh, represented, with some exception of course, which represented uh, mines, whereas uh, coal mining had already ended. Just a few words on the connection between the uh, 
workers, uh, universe, and comic books. Uh, they consider the ninth art, that is the art of comic books, as we say in Belgium in France, as a fully working class art. Uh, it might deserve more deep research, but yes, this is the dimension of popular art very clearly present in the comic books sector and which is being researched upon in specialized uh, reviews on this connection between the uh, working class and uh, comic books. Uh, for example, yesterday a very good parallel was made with Marcinel, which is an iconic area of the in Belgium industrial uh, heritage and the Bois du Casier, which is uh, um, part of the miners' uh, history in Belgium, which uh, is something full of memory and history, and one of the biggest schools of uh, world comic books, which is the school of Marcinel. So on this uh, specific municipality, there is a connection between the two happening. A few words on the development of comic books. We've been uh, seeing over the last 20 years new shapes or forms or an explosion of new forms of comic books more uh, targeting um, adult public, non-fiction uh, uh, comic books, for example, or documentary comic books. Uh, and many comic books are also uh, talking about uh, the working class, uh, children from the working class, uh, on the immigrants, the Combardiner um, of Manuel Arsena was talking about uh, partly of the industrialization in France, uh, in the shipyards, and in some cases also about uh, the uh, workers, blue collar workers, using comic books as a way to talk about the deindustrialization process. So there is a true connection, and it's been the case for about 20 years, between the industrial sector, the working class sector, and comic books. I will take questions during the lunchtime only. Right. So this is in itself interesting, and it makes it possible to understand why over the last 15 years we had many comic books talking about uh, the mining sector and the working class. So I don't have time to go through all, all aspects of um, comic book history. We have the first illustrations of the mining sector and the working class in the beginning of the 19th century with the new forms, first forms of comic books in the years 30. There was the first history of Superman um, happening in a mine. It's a comic book from the years 1930. I'm not exactly sure of the exact date. But yes, the first American comic books, we tend to forget it, were very socially critical. It's a bit disappeared after the Second World War, but in the story of Superman, this is a typical story of the 1930s on miners against uh, the uh, cupidous uh, bosses. It was very much present in the years 1930, um, less in the 1950s, 60, and 70. The, there is, in some cases, uh, this industrial landscape, but in uh, comic books um, targeting children, not very much. Um, specific on the mining sector, by the way. For example, Big and Bricker, yes, which is a um, comic book on miners done by the coal mines of France, and it was re-edited with uh, some uh, success. And then uh, some references in some comic books, for example, Benoit Brisfer uh, in a moment in this uh, specific uh, comic book is uh, trapped in a mine, but um, very limited connections to the coal mining sector. 
So I was telling you for the last 10 to 15 years, uh, there is, in my opinion, a very uh, strong uh, production. I'm not going to talk about everything, of course, but it's still interesting. It shows the extent of this phenomenon on the uh, mining history human history as well with a very different uh, period, the 19th century, but uh, more of the 20th century and very different topics and d different uh, visual and scenario approaches. I'm going to tell you a few words later of, on this. Here again, you have other comic books. We were talking uh, quickly yesterday during the workshop, but let me still show you three case studies and we can discuss it a bit further during lunch if you are interested. But this show you the richness, originality and the issues comic books can produce. Unfortunately, well, when I prepared this presentation and my article, the book uh, Pays Noir by Sergio Salman was not published yet, so it's not part of my analysis. Uh, well, we broached it yesterday. We might uh, talk uh, about it a bit later. Of course, the first aspect I wanted to underline, and it creates a connection with some of the plenary discussions yesterday, is the presence of the um, mining heaps. This tool, which is a totem, a symbol, an icon, very much present in the uh, comic books, and does not necessarily talk about uh, mines, but who um, really want to um, show uh, this the mining heaps or headgear or pit head frame. This is something in comic books, uh, something uh, which serves as a symbol of the mining environment. In the um, comic uh, books, uh, this uh, headgear or pit head frame is used a lot. For example, uh, one uh, author uh, living close to Angoulême, but he comes from the uh, coal mining region in uh, in the north of France when he was going back home and when he saw a pit head frame he had really the sensation, the feeling that he was going home. Yesterday we were talking about the potential destruction of a high furnace and this material history is key for comic book authors to um, depict the uh, coal mining uh, ecosystem. I wanted to make the connection with uh, the discussion of yesterday with the material, physical culture, the importance of uh, preserving um, objects. And even when you are in the imagination world, such as in comic books, this uh, physical uh, presence of objects, material equipment is very much important indeed. Just checking time-wise how much time I have. That's OK. So I, I'll go through quickly. Um, the rest of my presentation and talk to you about this uh, comic book. Uh, I was very skeptical at, uh, to start with. It's a Souterrain from Romain Baudet. Souterrain means underground in English. It is what we call a steampunk uh, artistic current. It's quite uh, fashionable. It's an association between fantasy and industrial revolution. In a few words, this story tells uh, it's about uh, miners from the 1920s or 30. It's not indicated. Uh, neither is the uh, um, specific location. It's a general history about miners. And those miners are faced with the um, robotization of their trade. And there are two topics broached in this uh, comic um, book. Uh, first, robotization and the potential uh, disappearance of miners. And on the other hand, uh, the relations of uh, domination. So there is a first part which is rather descriptive on what is coal mining, what is happening in the mine. So in the first pages, the author wanted to be very accurate on the uh, drawings of the authenticity. And uh, this creates the connection with the debate we had yesterday and this morning, being authentic to be Credible, and it was very much important indeed because it will uh, bring a dimension of um, fantasy which is very 
puzzling, disturbing in the quest for uh, realism that you usually have in comic books. I don't really have time now to dig. Uh, to look uh, further into what um, the author is trying to uh, create as emotions. We were talking about the publics earlier today. I believe that comic books, and most certainly French-speaking comic books, is maybe one of the first uh, ownership-taking uh, forms of art. When we are young, we have our favorite comic book, and this is the first experience for a young person to take ownership of a form of art. So here, there is certainly something interesting to look into. Many accurate details, very authentic heritage images. And then comes fantasy. So in a nutshell, those miners who try to, well, one miner wants to destroy the robot, threatening their future as a working class of miner, creates a mining disaster and finds himself in a disappeared world, which existed in the past and was uh, hidden in the depth of Earth. These were small-sized people who had discovered uh, monsters and who dominated them, made them uh, slaves. And this is a kind of allegory about why thousands of strong miners accepted to be dominated in such a way. So there is a parallel between those ogres from the underground and the domination of those miners. In the last pages of the book, you see this parallel. Another interesting topic, and this is what one of the reasons why comic books are so rich, the opening of uh, the role of a machine as a freedom uh, means or domination means. These are topics going through the industrial history. Now, very quickly, um, because uh, I'm running out of time here, this show you the potential richness of comic books, which takes some liberties, some freedoms uh, in terms of icons of uh, narrative. Maybe the paintings can do it, but uh, the cinema and photograph fee uh, cannot go so far, in, um, as far as coming books when it comes to breaking barriers in terms of realism and icons such as the movie Terminal. I will go through quickly the slides on other forms. Maybe you know the art, l'art de chevalement, the art of uh, uh, the pit head frame, uh, which creates uh, this parallel as well, and which is a very iconoclast in the way a mining universe or ecosystem is represented, but at the same time, it introduces in the narrative and in the explanations many uh, elements on the uh, daily lives of the miners, and it introduced a dreamlike experience between the uh, discovery of the mining environment and uh, the discovery of art with many uh, flashbacks, schemes. This is very much original in the way history of miners is uh, dealt with. There are also other approaches. I have I had already talked about Jean-Luc Wallier with Sortir de Terre, where his approach is much more uh, journalist-like, historical. A third example, very quickly, for another kind of topic of public, Les Gueules Noires, a comic book inspired on um, funny uh, British uh, bulls, the Full Monty, Braced Off, Billy Elliot. Uh, they uh, use the reversing of roles and uh, the change of the working class. This is a comic book rather uh, dedicated to uh, children with a different kind of narrative of approach, giving a lot of importance to the respect of history 
and uh, making sure not to forget about the history of binders. I will be quickly reaching my conclusion, but I wanted to tell you about macaroni, the last one. It's a way to uh, transmit a history with a very original visual uh, proceed proceedings, techniques. This is an Italian character recalling uh, the history of mining uh, very uh, through uh, smoke uh, with the start of uh, a kind of amnesia and many other um, forms as well. Some books are indeed available in this uh, bookshop and it shows you the richness and diversity of how the mining industry and uh, environment can be represented. So as a conclusion, some general observations. First, comic books is uh, an art which highlighted um, minors, few women, and this is something interesting. Why are women minors absent uh, in most part in the comic books? within the pits and outside of the pits. And then uh, it's um, comic books um, endeavor to preserve historical authenticity and truthfulness. Third, um, the production of comic books deals mainly with the post coal mining period. And fourth, and it draws connection with uh, f former presentations of today and yesterday, the uh, public um, can be interested in uh, such uh, comic books. And um, you, you should ask yourself if you want to make a museum on comic books or how to uh, approach the, uh, the issue. Sorry, it was a bit uh, quick. We can continue this discussion during lunch. But uh, comic books as an art form um, gives a new universe to represent the whole mining universe or environment. Thank you very much indeed.